So we're going to look at how do we read in a comma separated value or CSV file. And I've added one to my debug.net6 folder here with my exe so that I can access this. But I just want you to take a look at what's inside of it. A comma separated file is really just used to store data in a simplified and organized way. It usually stores this data in a tabular form. And so looking at each one of these items, we can see that there's a comma separator between ultimately what we consider to be fields, right? So I could take a look at this data and say, oh, well, th this is a first name, this is a last name, this is a street address, this is a city, a state, and a zip code, right? And so CSV files really are fields or properties, however you want to think about those, broken up into uh, these comma separated delimiters. So as we read the item in, we ultimately, we read it line by line. So we read in the whole line and there's actually a, a hidden character here that CSV files, text files, all different types of files use, which is an end of line marker. And so anytime you've hit enter or anything like that, it places an end of line marker there. So it knows where those delimiters are, basically those carriage returns. So when we read them in, we read them one line at a time, and then we can take that line in our code and parse out the field by field by field, whatever we need to do. And so basically this is how you process a file. We read the line, we separate out the data however we need to based on that comma delimiter, and then we can read the next line and we can do that over and over until we're finished with our file. And so let's take a look at, at how this works. I'm gonna start by setting up a path variable. And since I'm not using any kind of directory or anything, I can just use the name, um, my, it's called my users, all lowercase, no space, CSV. But I do want to check that it actually exists before I move forward. Um, and one of the ways that we can do that is by using the file.exists um, property that's built into C Sharp. And so the other thing that we want to use is to create a stream reader. Um, and so a stream reader is ultimately the, so we can put our mouse over and see stream reader. Um, it's a built-in class from system.io, which is input output, um, says it implements a text reader that reads characters from a byte stream in a particular encoding. Now that's a lot to take in. Ultimately what stream leader, reader allows us to do is read in those lines of a basic text file and be able to then access the data that's read in we have to have a place in memory to store the information that's coming in from our text file. And a stream reader, this built-in class, ultimately provides us with the methodology to read that data in and hold it in memory while we do whatever we need to do with it. So we're going to check that the file exists before we proceed any further. And so we can do file.exists and then our path variable to ultimately determine if it exists. Um, if it doesn't, then we we don't want to, um, to do anything with it because then we'll end up with um, some kind of error or exception. And so I'm just gonna write out the file doesn't exist if that's the case. So this is very important, file.exists, file also part of the system.io class um, provides a lot of methods. It says for creation, copying, deleting, moving, opening files. And so exists ultimately it gives us a true or false, which is why we can use it in the if statement, but then it determines whether or not a specified file exists at this path. Now we're not gonna kind of go down this rabbit hole of do I have read or write access to it? Um, or do I have read or write access to the place where I'm trying to save this file or move this file? Um, because we, we really, you know, we're trying to keep this simple, but you would want to check for these things. If you were reading from a file, you would want to make sure not only does it exist, that you have access to open it. If you're trying to save a file, you would want to make sure that you have 
actual save or write access to that location. That's just good programming or otherwise you're going to end up with all kinds of exceptions. So now that we have checked the file exists, we're going to use our stream reader to open the file. And so this is that reader I created earlier. So we're going to make a new stream reader. Um, but instead of just the path, like my IntelliSense tries to, to use here, I'm going to use file, open read, and then the path. So open read um, says it opens an existing file for reading. And we always want to just access a file um, at kind of what we would consider the lowest level of access that we need. So I don't want to open a file for editing if I'm just reading from it, because then I could accidentally write to it and maybe just like disturb or uh, destroy any of the data that's inside of it, which could create very bad consequences. So I just want to open it for reading because that's all I'm going to be doing with it. And then we can decide how we want to proceed. What, what do we need to do with the data uh, once we've received it? If you're just wanting to grab each one of those comma separated items like it's in an array so that you could access each piece, um, then, then that's super easy to accomplish. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, take this stream reader and begin reading the lines. And we're going to do this in a loop to make sure we loop through each line of the file until we get to the end. And one of the great things about um, using files and things like Stream Reader is not only are those hidden characters there for the end of line marker, so Stream Reader knows, hey, this is just one line, and if I say I just want to read one line, I get one line, but it also has an end of file marker, so it knows when it gets to the end of the file and it's not going to try to keep reading something that we don't want. So while we're, we're going to say while, um, not the reader, uh, end of stream. And so this is built into our stream reader, this end of stream property we can look at that says it gives us a bool and indicates whether the current stream position is at the end of the stream, which is because we've reached the end of the file. So you could say, well, that, you know, not equals true or whatever. I just, I'll put the not here. And so here is where we can access each line as it's read in. So I'm going to use var here. And if, if you aren't familiar with var, var is used to declare variables when we don't want to have to necessarily declare a type. Right? Because C-sharp is a strongly typed language, which means we always have to declare variables with a specific data type in order to use them. But sometimes we actually don't know um, or we want it to be ambiguous about the type that we're using. So with a var, we can declare a variable and we can use that to store any of our simple .NET data types. We can also use it to store complex types or user-defined types, which are objects. And so when we're working with files, sometimes we're not necessarily sure the kind of data that we're going to get back. And so we're going to use var. And you can see it's already, my IntelliSense is already trying to write this out because this is a very common pattern. I'm going to use my reader, my stream reader object, read line property, which looks, if you're familiar with writing and reading to the console, we know about read and write line. This is very much the same thing. But instead of writing it out to the console or reading it from the console, we're getting it from that stream that's holding all that information about that file. We're just going to read the one line and we're going to put it into this line variable. Now, if we want to stop and look at this, we could do that right now. Let's hop into here. And so it it obviously found, right, this was true. It found my file. It came into the if statement and it stopped here on this line. And if I step, I can put my mouse over and see here is all that data held in memory currently in the line variable that is inside that CSV file. 
So, but it's not split out yet. It's just the line. So if I want to split it, what I would need to do is split it based on that comma. And there is a built-in string uh, split method that we can use. So I'm going to set up another var and I'm going to use line dot split. And I want to tell it that I'm going to split on the comma. Now, a couple of things about split. Split basically looks at a string and says, whatever character you give me, I'm going to separate this based on that character. It returns a string array. We can see that because it's got the brackets right here. And it takes a character, a char. So we have to use these single quotes in here, not the double quotes. Remember, double quotes means string. Single quotes means char. So ultimately, what's going to get held in values is a string array of each one of those items. And so we can actually take a look at that. If we put our mouse over, let's see, did we get the line? Oh, I stopped too far. So here's the line. We can see the line in memory. I can put my mouse over values and I can see that there are six items in this array, right? Zero through five. And here they are individually now so that I can access them. And so now if I just wanted to print the first name of this person, I could access position zero of this array. If I wanted to then take this a step further and start assigning these to independent variables or class properties, if you know what I'm talking about, then, uh, then you can take it to that next step. Um, so then you, this is going to loop through and it's going to do this for each one, but we overwrite this data in line and values each time. So if you wanted to do something with this data, like store it elsewhere, um, maybe you want to create a list and put this data in the list instead so that each time this comes through, you're going to get a new line and then it's going to split it into a new array. So you would need to do something with this data at this point if you wanted to do something with it. So in this case, I'm just going to write out, um, let's do hello. And we'll do their first name, which is position zero of this array. And so what do we get? Hello, Sarah. Hello, Greg. So the last thing that we want to make sure that we do is when we're finished with a file, because we opened it, that we close it. So you have to do this. Um, like the last thing where, cause you have to be able to access um, the file ultimately um, or the stream reader. So I can't do this like out here at the end of my application. I have to do it inside of this loop. Um, so when I'm finished, I would wanna do something like reader.close um, to make sure that I have closed up the stream to the file, because otherwise, if you needed to go edit that file or access it with another application or anything like that, you would get the message that the file was in use um, because that stream still has read access to it, still attached to it ultimately in memory. So make sure you always close out your stream reader and writer type resources when you're done using them. This also prevents your application from having ultimately memory leaks and problems like that where you're just using up resources that you don't need anymore. So this is ultimately how you can access the CSV file, grab that line, split it into uh, various values, and then access those values.